Good afternoon. Thanks for joining me in this session. My name is Louis Wong and I'm a Principal Product Manager at AWS. I'm very excited to share with you a new capability we're launching in QuickSight called Amazon QuickSight Q. Before I talk about Q, I will give you a quick overview of what Amazon QuickSight is all about for those that are not familiar. We will also talk about what are some of the main challenges the customer are asking us to help them with and how are we going to do it with Q. And lastly, I'll run through a demo to show you Q in action as well as how easy it is to get set up. Traditionally, we see that customers have to make difficult business justifications whenever they need to purchase additional BI licenses for users or teams in the organization. Now, what if you didn't have to make this sort of trade-off between ubiquitous access to data and prohibited cost? That's what we did with Amazon QuickSight, our cloud-native BI solution that is natively integrated into AWS. QuickSight is serverless, which means that you can start with tens of users and then scale to tens of thousands of users with zero servers to manage. QuickSight is also the only solution with pay-as-you-go pricing for readers. For as low as 30 cents a session, with each session lasting 30 minutes and capped at a maximum of $5, a month. This results in significant savings for customers by not having to pay for inactive usage and no user will ever go over the $5 monthly cap. Which is why with QuickSight, you no longer have to choose between access and cost and can truly empower everyone in your organization with analytics. Another benefit is that we are a first party native AWS solution, meaning that QuickSight is fully integrated with the rest of AWS, with AWS grade security and compliance, end-to-end -end encryption, centralized IAM permissions with fine-grained access control, CloudTrail logging for audits, and more. With QuickSight, you can also embed rich interactive analytics capability directly within your application, and also benefit from the powerful machine learning capabilities such as built-in anomaly detection and alerts forecasting, and auto-narratives without having any machine learning expertise. Or you can bring your own machine learning models from Amazon SageMaker to augment your data in QuickSight. These are the differentiations that customers say matters to them a lot as they look to modernize their BI stack. Now, I want you to think about this. How many of you in the last few months had a situation where you were in the meeting room and someone asked a question about data? but no one really knew the answer on top of their head. And then there's this period of awkward silence, followed by, we'll follow up offline. Or maybe you were looking at your daily reports, and maybe you just want to dig a little deeper, or look a little further in time, or slice the data a little differently. What do you do? More often than not, you go to your BI team and ask them for help. I wanted to share with you this exchange that I think many of you can relate to, whether you're on the business side or the BI side. This happens all the time. As a business user, as a business user goes to the BI team to ask for help on getting some data that they cannot find in their existing dashboard, typically the BI engineer and analyst will ask them to submit a request and add it to the backlog. But this request is urgent, just like every other ad hoc request there is. And ultimately, the business user may get back the answer that they were looking for a couple days or maybe even weeks later. So the two recurring themes we constantly hear from our customers are, first of all, how can we help our users get to the answers faster? Let's face it, it is a problem today and it can take days or weeks for business users to get the answers that they're looking for. The second problem is that customers want us to help them solve is that they want to enable their business users to be more self-sufficient and capable of self-serving their questions so that their thinly staffed BI teams don't drown in a growing volume of ad hoc requests. Which is why to help our customers solve this problem, we're introducing Amazon QuickSight Q, a new capability in QuickSight that allows business users to just type in their question using natural language and get instant answers in QuickSight as a visualization. Let's take a look at what 
Q brings to the table. First and foremost, it is a truly natural language search-based system. Business users can ask questions about their data using everyday business language in the most natural form. There's no need to learn or remember any question syntax, deal with complex keyword tokens, nothing. Second, the benefit of doing so is that business users can now ask ad hoc questions and get answers that goes beyond the known questions that are already captured in their pre-built dashboard. One thing that we have learned is that most users don't actually know what data they have access to, what dashboards are out there, and what is or is not available in those dashboards. So a critical product decision for us early on is that users must be able to ask questions about all of their data. To ask a question, they shouldn't have to go pick a data set or a dashboard to ask questions. That defeats the spirit of natural language query. And lastly, it is incredibly easy to set up and get started with Q. All it takes is a couple of clicks and you're ready to ask some questions and get answers in minutes. But frankly, this is a hard problem to solve, make no mistake, which is why nobody really has done them well up to this point, until now. Before we get into the demo and see Q in action, I do want to take a moment and share some of the hard problems that we're solving. When we think about natural language queries, there's really two sides of it. There's the query understanding, and then there's a the data understanding piece. Let's start with query understanding. This is all about parsing the language structure in the question and understanding the user's intent. So for a question like, show me weekly revenue week over week for California compared to New York in 2020, Q needs to determine that weekly is an intent not only to group by the data by week, but also implies that the user is looking for a trend and that revenue is a metric to aggregate by that California and New York are states that compare to implies you want to see these trends side by side. And lastly, you want to be able to filter in the year 2020. So Q needs to interpret and understand all of this intent captured in the question, but also deal with the fact that the same question can be asked in infinite ways. But in order to fully understand this question and give an answer, Q also needs to know what's in the data. And the challenge with data is that in its raw form, there's no semantic to it. It's just rows and columns. They're messy, they're cryptic, and has built-in aggregations and business logics that only the BI team understands. There's probably also a couple of dozens of data sets that looks just like these ones. Then the challenge for Q is making sense out of all of this data set and identifying what data to query. To solve the challenges, I wanted to share with you this chart, which gives you a 30,000 foot view of what happens under the hood when a user asks a question. In order to generate an answer, which is what you see on the right of the screen, Q first needs to identify the intent captured in the question. It needs to be able to know which data set needs to be queried and how to link the intents identified in the first step to the elements in the data. So to accomplish all of that, a knowledge layer that describes the underlying physical data schema is used throughout to inform our machine learning models. The output of all of that is then used to create what we call an intent representation, which is a SQL-like syntax that is then used to generate the visualization in the UI. So with that, let's go into the demo. To demonstrate how easy it is to ask questions and get answers in queue, I will walk through an end-to-end -end scenario of a business user asking a series of questions. In this demo, I'll be using a sales data set that includes revenue at the daily granularity and that can be broken down by different dimensions such as state, industry, segment, customers, and more. We'll start with a few basic questions and incrementally, I will add variations and complexities to showcase what Q can do. Here, I'm looking at a sales dashboard that shows me the sales by state in 2020. I see that California and New York are the top two states. 
Let's say I wanted to compare the sales trend between California and New York this year. To do that, I can just click on the Q search bar and start typing. What is the weekly revenue for California? And there I have my answer. Notice that on the top, Q shows what we call a restatement. It interprets my question and then restate it in a way that I can understand so that I can have confidence that it is doing the right thing. And if I click on sales, it shows me which data set it is querying from, which column, and how it is doing an aggregation. Similarly, if I click on California, it shows me the field, which is state, as well as a data set and the value that it is filtering on. Now, let me type compared to New York. Now in this case, notice that New York now is in the restatement. And similarly, we're filtering New York in the state column. And lastly, in, in 2020. And there I have my answer. This is a type of question that is very specific to a point in time situation. And it's also often the type of questions that are not immediately found in pre-built existing dashboards. And because Q uses advanced natural language processing techniques, you can ask the same questions in multiple ways. In fact, we've partnered with hundreds of teams in Amazon across a variety of different business functions, such as sales, marketing, HR, logistic, and many more to collect a large volume of training data to train our models. So for the same question, I can also type 2020 weekly revenue for California versus New York. And I get the same answer. And because Q is trained on millions of these examples, there's no need for users to learn any new syntax, keyword tokens, or rules. They can just ask their question in the most natural language way possible and get answers instantly. Now, let's dig a little deeper. Let's say I wanted to know who are the top customers in California. I can type, which customers are the biggest spenders in California in 2020? And there you go. I see that Moto Life is our top customer this year, followed by American Bancorp and 5G Telecom. Continuing down this theme, I can keep drilling down. Now, let's say I wanted to look at American Bancorp sales trend over time. I can type, show me America. And as I type, Q actually provides autocomplete suggestions so that as a user, I don't need to type out the full name or remember exactly how it is represented in the data. I can just click on the suggestion and proceed to complete my question. Monthly revenue in California. And now I have my answer. Now notice two things in this question. First of all, I asked about revenue and Q understood that I meant sales column in the data which is correct. Secondly, I actually misspelled California here and Q was able to get it right as well. Out of the box, Q comes with a built-in dictionary and customers can bring their own company or domain specific vocabulary to further enhance Q. And you'll notice that with Q, it automatically selects the right chart type for the answer. But as a user, you can also click on the visual chart type selector and change to something that you prefer. For example, here, I can click on the bar chart to see the sales trends or bar, bars. I can also change it to a simple table if I wanted to. I just walked through a quick demo of the question and answering capabilities from Q, from a reader's perspective. Now, let's look at how an author in QuickSight can easily set up Q with just a few clicks. If you're an existing QuickSight customer, you probably already have a number of data sets ready for Q to start answering questions from. If you're new to QuickSight, it's as easy as connecting QuickSight to your existing data sources, such as 
Amazon Redshift, Aurora, S3, Athena, or even third-party commercial databases. Q works with any of the data sources supported by QuickSight, and it can answer questions by directly querying those sources or through the QuickSight Spice engine to further accelerate the performance of the queries. The first step to enable Q is to create what we call a topic. A topic represents a subject area that your users want to ask questions about. So let me navigate to the topics page and I'm going to go ahead and create a new topic. I'll call this Website Traffic Analytics. The next step is to add data to this topic. I can do that by selecting the data set that I already have, or I can import all the data sets from an existing dashboard. In this case, I'll choose the Add Data Set option, and I can bring in multiple data sets or a single data set. Here, I'm just going to choose a single data set. If you add multiple data sets, Q will be able to automatically determine based on various signals which data set to query to get you the answer. Now, my topic is created, and I can see the data set right down here. Clicking into it, I can see all of the fields that are available in this data set. I can add friendly names. In this case, the names are pretty readable, so I'm just going to leave the friendly names as is. You'll notice that I can also include and exclude specific columns. This allows the author to exclude particular fields that they don't want users to be able to ask questions about. So here, let's say I'm going to remove all the columns related to social media. One of the most powerful capabilities at the disposal of the author is the ability to add synonyms. Synonyms allows authors to be able to expand Q's vocabulary to terms and phrases that are more familiar for the business reader. For example, website page views can often be referred to uh, in a company as just PV. So to add a synonym, I can just click on the plus sign here and then type in PV. You can add multiple synonyms to a particular column name. And you can also add synonyms to all of the fields that are available in the data set. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and save this change. And then now I can start asking questions about this data just by clicking on the search bar at the top. I'm going to ask, show me PV by year. And now I have an answer. Notice that Q actually understood PV and queried the website page views. And it looks like the page view actually increased quite significantly between 2015 and 2016. I wonder what the actual growth rate is. To do that, I can actually just ask Q for it. So let's try show me year over year PV growth rate. And there's my answer. It looks like page view increased 137% in 2016 compared to the prior year. Notice this is an ad hoc calculation that Q did on the fly. This data was not available in the data set as in, in a pre-computed form. So this answer looks good. Now I'm going to click on the looks good button down below. Now, because user questions can be ambiguous, whether Q is confident uh, or not about the answer, whenever it is not, it will prompt users to disambiguate. So for example, I can type visits per month. Now Q prompts me to choose between website visit and website unique visits. Let's say that as an author, I know that when we talk about visit, my users assumes unique visits. So I can choose website unique visit, And now Q will return me the correct answer. Again, I click on the looks good. And now as an author, actually, I can actually mark this answer as a reviewed answer. This means that going forward, 
Q will remember this answer whenever a user asks this particular question. And the user will know this by seeing the review tab uh, label. Now, if I refresh the page, as an author, I can now see all the questions that were asked on this topic that I created. On the top, you'll see the number of questions asked, as well as the feedback breakdowns of this question. So there were two positive feedback and two no feedback. If I click on view, Q will show me all the questions that were asked. So these were the questions that we just ran through in the demo. Who asked them, when it was asked, and whether the feedback was positive, negative, or no feedback. This allows me as an author to further improve Q for my users. And lastly, I can share this topic with my users so that they can ask questions about this data as well. So that concludes an end-to-end -end walkthrough of Amazon QuickSight Q. Let's switch back to the slides. In summary, I wanted to highlight the key features that Q provides to the readers and the authors. For the readers, they get query autocomplete so that business users don't need to know exactly how something is named in the data. Q also provides synonym matchings so users can continue to use the vocabulary that they are familiar with. Q handles spelling mistakes, and it can perform ad hoc calculations that don't exist in the data. If Q gets an answer wrong or it is not confident about the answers, users can correct and improve. And the feedback loop can be used to further help improve the overall system. Last and most importantly, users can ask questions across all of their data and topics, not just on a specific data set or dashboard. For the authors, Authors actually play a super important role in Q to make the system more sophisticated to answer business users' questions. They can bring in custom vocabulary that are specific to their domain or company. They can define business logics in the form of filters and expressions when answering questions. And they have the ability to see what are all the questions that are being asked, who asked them, when it was asked, and what the feedback was. This is very important for, so that authors can further improve Q. And finally, Authors can create reviewed and linked answers to questions that Q cannot answer just yet. So to summarize with Q, we're making it super easy for business users to just simply type in their questions using natural language and get instant answer in QuickSight in the form of a visualization. Companies can deploy these capabilities for all of their employees or embed it in their applications for their users. It's super easy to get started as well. You don't need any machine learning expertise all it takes is a few clicks, and Q can start answering questions about your data in minutes. Amazon QuickSight Q is available as a preview starting today, and you can sign up for, from our website. It's an invite only at the moment, so you'll be notified by email when you are accepted to the preview. I want to thank everyone who attended this session today. I hope you enjoyed this session and liked what you saw. And with that, have a great rest of the day. Cheers.